Introduction to Neural Networks for Java, Class 2, Part 4. Welcome to Class 2, Part 4. In this section, we're going to review how to perform basic matrix operations, both from a mathematical and from a code standpoint. You're going to see the matrix notation and see how to perform operations such as matrix multiplication, dot product, division, addition, a variety of matrix operations that are very necessary as you learn to program neural networks through this course. We will begin by showing you some of these operations now. First, let's look at matrix addition. For matrix addition, the two operand matrices must be the same dimensions. To add two matrices, you simply add the numbers one by one. Each of these four numbers in the resultant matrix is the result of adding the first two. For example, 1 and 4 equals 5. We will now look at the dot product. A dot product can be calculated between any two vector matrices that have the same length. A vector matrix is a matrix that only has a single row or column. You can see these two vector matrices here have the same length. They are both 4. We will now see how to take the dot product of these two vector matrices. The dot product is a single number, not a matrix like many of these operations return. Here you can see how the, the dot product is calculated. The dot product is basically the summation of the products of each of the numbers in the two matrices. 1 times 5, 2 times 6, 3 times 7, and so on. Basically we're multiplying by each of the elements in the two matrices. Then we're going to add those elements together. And finally we sum these numbers together producing a dot product of 70. Now we will consider matrix multiplication. Like the dot product, matrix multiplication is very important for neural network programming and you'll see it again in future examples in this course. Here we see two matrices that are about to be multiplied. One thing that is very important to note about matrix multiplication is that it is not commutative like normal multiplication, meaning you cannot swap the two operands. If you swap the places of these two matrices, you would get an entirely different result than the equation that you see here. To multiply two matrices, they must have opposing numbers of rows and columns like you see here. The first matrix has three rows, the second matrix has three columns. Likewise, two columns to two rows. This is how the matrices must be configured in order for them to be multiplied by each other. Here you see the matrix multiplication occurring. Notice the far left side. The one comes from the first matrix, the seven comes from the second. Four from the first matrix, ten from the second. These numbers are combined as you can see here. You may want to flip back to the previous matrix to see where the numbers are actually coming from to understand matrix multiplication. Matrix multiplication can be difficult to visualize. That's why this matrix is given here that shows where each of the numbers actually comes from. Here you see an identity matrix. This is an identity matrix for a 3 by 3 matrix. When the identity matrix is multiplied by a matrix of the same size, it results in the exact same matrix that it was multiplied by. It's like multiplying by 1. An identity matrix always is all zeros with the uh, northwest diagonal to southeast diagonal all set to 1s. Here you see a matrix being multiplied by the identity matrix. You can see that the result of this multiplication is the same as the first operand. This is the point of the identity matrix. Here you can see matrix multiplication by a scalar. A scalar is a number that is not a matrix, basically two. Matrix multiplication by a scalar is very simple. You just multiply every element in the matrix by the scalar. You can see this happening here. Matrix subtraction is a relatively simple operation. You need two matrices of the same dimensions, and to subtract them, you simply subtract each row and column from the corresponding row and column, as you see here. Matrix transposition is very important for Hotfield neural networks, which we will see in the next class session. 
Matrix transposition takes the number of rows and columns and inverses those. Here you see the matrix on the left being inverted into the matrix on the right. You can also take the length of a vector. This is called the vector length. The length of a vector is basically every single element of that vector squared and then take the square root of the summation of those elements. Here you see the, how the vector length can be calculated. The matrix math class makes it easy to perform any of these operations on two matrices. Consider matrix X and Y. Now of course these would have to be initialized to proper matrix values that could be multiplied, but if they were, you would simply use the matrix math dot multiply static function to multiply the X matrix by the Y matrix, which would result in the Z matrix. The matrix math class has functions available for all the other operations such as the dot product. This concludes part four of class two. In the next part, you're going to learn how to perform bipolar operations with matrices. We hope you will continue with that section. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.